Good morning. My name is Astrid McKenzie, and it's really lovely to be here with you this morning. This is the church school lesson for St. Paul's Episcopal Church for Sunday, the 24th of January, 2021. We're going to begin by saying the Lord's Prayer, which is, of course, the prayer that Jesus taught us. So why don't you join with me as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Okay, so this morning we are going to go back to reading some stories from the Old Testament. For the last few weeks, if you remember, we've been reading stories about Jesus as we've been in the weeks leading up to and immediately following Christmas. But now we're going to go back to these stories from the Old Testament and we're going to pick up where we left off. It was a while back now, so I'm not sure if you remember, but before Advent started, we were reading about Moses. Um, in the last week before we turned our attention to the Christmas stories, Rachel Miller read us the story about Moses and the burning bush. And in that story, God asked Moses to do a very big job. Do you remember what that was? God asked Moses to go to the Pharaoh, who was the king of Egypt, who had enslaved Moses' people. And God wanted Moses to ask the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go, to let them be free. Moses was a bit scared in that story and he wondered how he could make Pharaoh listen to him, but God promised that he would be with Moses. So our story this week is called Let My People Go. And again, we're reading from our Children of God Storybook Bible by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So if you want to read along with us, please feel free. This story is Let My People Go. This is what it looks like. It's from the book of Exodus, based on verses 7 to 15. Moses told Pharaoh, Let my people go. But Pharaoh said, No. So God sent plagues to convince Pharaoh to let the Hebrew people go. First, he turned the water into blood. Then he sent frogs and gnats and flies. Then the cattle died and people and animals got sores on their skin. There was thunder and hail and a great cloud of locusts filled the sky. And darkness covered the land for three days. After each plague, Pharaoh agreed to let the Hebrew people go. But then he would harden his heart and say, no. Finally, God wept because now he had to send the most terrible plague of all. Mark your doors with lamb's blood, God told Moses to tell the Hebrew families. On that dreadful night, death passed through the streets, and in every Egyptian family, the firstborn died. The Hebrews called the night Passover because death passed over the Hebrew homes that were marked with lamb's blood and spared their children's lives. Go, be gone, Pharaoh cried, as he held the body of his eldest son. The Hebrews quickly left. But when Pharaoh saw that there was no one to build his pyramids, he hardened his heart once more. He sent his army to chase the Hebrews down and bring them back into slavery. The Hebrews fled from Egypt and at last arrived at the edge of the sea. They looked behind them and saw Pharaoh's horses and chariots racing toward them. They were trapped. God, help us, they cried. Moses said, don't be afraid. God is with us. God told Moses to hold his staff over the sea. God blew back the water with a mighty wind, leaving a dry path through the sea. The Hebrews crossed over on dry land, the waters forming a wall on their left and on their right. The Egyptian chariots followed, 
but their wheels got stuck in the mud. The Hebrews watched in awe as the waters returned and swallowed up Pharaoh's army. At last, they were really free. Moses led the people in a song of joy. Then his sister Miriam shook a tambourine and the women sang and danced to thank God for saving them. Dear God, help me to bring freedom to all of your children. That's quite a story. In the prayer at the end of the story, Archbishop Tutu has us praying to help to bring freedom to all God's children. Freedom is a really important thing and it's something that in America we talk about a lot, right? And that reminded me, that prayer, that this past week we just celebrated a public holiday in honour of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm guessing that maybe you all discussed that in school. Um, there are often lessons around this time of the year to teach us about Dr. King and what it was that he did for us and what it was that he wanted for Americans. He was a, Dr. King was a really important man in American history. We know that he was a preacher and a believer in God and he also believed in the importance of freedom and for equal rights for everyone. When he was young there were rules that limited where some people could live or study or where they could eat or even where they could sit based on the color of their skin. And he knew that was wrong. And so he spent many years working to change those laws, hoping that all Americans could someday have the freedoms that they deserved. It took a long time for him to work for change um, because it can be difficult for, to ask for big changes and it can take a long time to convince people to change their minds, especially if those changes are going to make people uncomfortable. In our story today, Moses had to ask for an enormous change and he knew that it was going to be hard for him. But God had promised to be with him, so Moses did that difficult thing that God asked of him. And then when Pharaoh refused, Moses asked again and again. And he kept asking and kept pushing for what he knew was right until eventually the Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites go. And even though Pharaoh changed his mind and went running after to try and capture them, finally Moses' people achieved the freedom that they were looking for. I think we can all learn a lesson from the persistence that Moses had. It's really important for us to keep on trying to do what God is asking of us. It doesn't always happen right away, just like it didn't always happen for Moses. And it didn't always happen right away for Dr. King and his movement. But each of them tried to keep going and to be the people that, that God asked them to be. And we need to follow that example too. And to help change the world around us so that all of God's children can live in freedom and with equality. Now, those sound like pretty big goals. And they are. These are things that can take many generations. But we can start them with really small steps. We can make a difference every day to the people around us. We can make a start on goals like that by making sure that everyone we come into contact with feels included by us. It's so important to offer welcome to everybody not just to people who think like we do or who look like we do. We know what it's like when we start something new or when we show up to a place for the first time, we can feel awkward or we can feel unwelcome. Sometimes it seems like everybody else knows someone or has something in common and we're the people who don't fit in. So in doing what God asks us to do, we we need to make sure that other people don't feel that way. We need to make sure everybody is invited to join in with us if we're playing games or if we're having a conversation. 
we can make sure to welcome people who are new in our school or who show up for the first time in our church or maybe who move into our neighborhood. And not only do we have to welcome them, we have to listen to what they have to say. Because sometimes there are things that we do and we don't realize that they're hurting other people. So sometimes if we're being like a pharaoh and doing something that is harming somebody else, we need to change our mind like the pharaoh needed to change his mind. So it's important to persist in working for freedom for other people and it's important to keep working on ourselves to make sure that we are being welcoming and inclusive and kind to people. And when we realise that we're not being kind, we can work harder to change our minds. And if each of us does this, this thing that God is asking us, then we will be helping to make the world a better place for all of God's children and to bring freedom and equality for everybody. Those are my thoughts for the story today. And I'm sure you have some thoughts of your own that maybe you can discuss more with your family. Now, it's time for us to read our prayers of the people. At the end of each prayer, we're going to speak together and as we say, God hears me when I pray. You ready? God, we pray for family, friends, pets and others in our everyday life. We pray to keep them healthy, safe and happy. We love them. God hears me when I pray. God, we pray for doctors, teachers, coaches, clergy, and caregivers, and for all those who keep us healthy and challenge our minds. God hears me when I pray. God, we pray for our president, members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans. We pray they make good choices, have integrity, are honest and open to new ideas. We pray they learn how to collaborate to make decisions. God hears me when I pray. God, we pray for people with disabilities who are in need of help, those who can't be helped and those who don't know they need help. We pray that they overcome darkness. God hears me when I pray. God, we pray for those who have died within our faith community. God hears me when I pray. God, we pray for ourselves. Guide us and show us the paths we should take. Strengthen us, keep us believing in ourselves and being grateful for what we have. Remind us you love us and watch over us every day. God hears me when I pray. God, we pray for the world. We pray for countries in need or in trouble. Help us to keep our world healthy, safe and peaceful. God hears me when I pray. Out of all the people in this great big world, God hears me, God knows my voice and God hears me when I pray. And finally together, we're going to read Psalm 23. If you have the words, you can read along. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Thank you for sharing this time with me this morning. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Bye-bye.